Hey guys, and welcome to the RevitKid.com. Today I'm going to show you a quick tip to create three-dimensional ribs for a metal standing seam roof. So typically what you do is you'll create a roof like this, and uh, whether it's a hip roof, whether it's a gable, I just want to show you how quick you can make these ribs. Uh, what you're seeing now is actually a surface pattern, which is kind of the way that you would do it most of the time. Um, you don't really need much more than to see these lines when you're creating documents. And you can see there, so it's just a metal metal roof uh, material with a, a surface pattern and um, it's actually a model pattern so you can move it around. But let's say you want to do a rendering and I'm not a big fan of how this looks rendered. I'll actually just show you real quickly a realistic view. Let's zoom in a little. Even here you could tell it's kind of difficult to see the lines and when you render it you don't get enough shadow out of the bump map that I would like to see. So what I did was I found a quick way to create uh, the actual roof uh, the actual standing seams in the roof without having to do much more work. So what you do first is you select your roof and you're going to copy it and paste it um, into the same place. So I'm just going up to, I selected the roof and I went to modify and then I'm saying copy and I'm going to paste a line paste a line to the same place. Now we have two roofs in the same place. What you're going to do here is you're going to turn this roof into a sloped glazing type. The reason you're going to do that is because we're going to create uh, vertical or horizontal, I guess, depending on how you're looking at it, uh, vertical ribs using basically mullions. And um, if I select slope glazing, <coughs> you're going to see there's a whole bunch of little patterns that come up. And what I'll do here is I'll actually just offset it uh, from the level that it's on by about two feet just to pull it up for now. And you can see what's going on. So now you can see I created the slope glazing roof. It's got no pattern on it. Uh, but it's and it's got glass. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a new type. So I'm going to edit type, and I'm going to duplicate it. And I'm gonna call this one standing seam. Now what you want to do is the curtain panel. If you pull this down, and I'm using the default architecture template right now, just so you know. And I wanted to use a default template so that we all have sort of the same starting place. Uh, so this is the default architecture template, and I'm gonna select empty system panel. And now what I want to do is I want to put a grid layout on one of, one of the grids, whether it's one or two. I'm not 100% sure which one it's going to be, so I'm going to try one first and see how it, how it works. One is basically horizontal, two is vertical, or vice versa, depending on the system. So I'm going to do a fixed distance, and I'm going to make it something like 18 inches. And I'm going to also go down to grid one mullions down here, and for the interior type, because I don't need any border mullions, I mean you could if you wanted to mess with those two, but right now I'm only doing interior types, I'm going to do the one inch square. Now you can make your own mullion. Uh, I would suggest doing it. Right now I'm just going to use one that's already in the template. But you can make one that's the right size, the right thickness, the right material out of the rectangular and then use that. But I'm just going to use the one inch square to make things easier. Now I'm going to click OK and you're going to see right away it's going to start creating those those ridges along the surface without you having to do much more work. So now let me zoom in here. You can see there's the ridges and there's the surface. Uh, right now it's a little bit above, so what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to cut a section so I know exactly where it is. Or actually I'll just go to the elevation. So you can see there's my ridges and there's my roof below it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move these down real quick. So they're in line with this edge. You can make that more precise, I'm just doing it faster. So now you see we have the ribs which are in three dimensions and casting a shadow on the roof. Uh, what I want to do now is I want to turn off the surface pattern of this regular roof so that you don't get confused. I'm just going to go to edit type, go down to the standing seam material I had. I'm just going to turn this off and say no pattern. Don't worry about that. Okay, so now what you see there, if I zoom in again, is we have three dimensional ribs and a three-dimensional roof and now we have some really cool stuff for graphics. Uh, one little quick tip as well if they don't line up at the edges which sometimes they will sometimes they won't uh, what you can do is you can you can mess around with the curtain panel grid. So now if you want to line these up these ribs um, that can be a little bit daunting of a task but the easiest way to do it would be to select the grid panel uh, configuration here so the uh, grid layout and if you select this line, you'll see this this little box comes up. If you remember from one of my tutorials about how to rotate the grid, this is how you would do it. And you can start messing with the offsets. Um, 
I like to do it through the grid panel or through visually through this. And you know, if you give it, let's say, six inches, you'll see it's going to move over six inches, and, and you sort of mess around with it until you you get it. You could go in in elevation or something and measure it and see see what it's going to be. Um, the other way to change it would be to select the actual system, and you can start messing with the offsets. But that's a global change. Um, so that's it. That's how you quickly create. Uh, 3D ribs for your renderings and visualizations and I hope that helps and I'll talk to you guys later.